Okay, hello everyone, and uh, this is the tutorial I promised you to do for the uh, G coding. And unfortunately, that I couldn't get the 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 what I call it, the best equipment to do this recording. So I just used my mobile phone, and I just use a tripod for the camera to do this one on uh, paper. Well, I can. Uh, well, I promise you that I will get something which I can record and sketch on the screen at the same time and this will be in the next few weeks but basically let's um, have uh, just a simple reminder about what we have in the G coding I told you earlier that the G coding is actually a code which is going to consist of uh, blocks and each block is to represent a code it should be written by the machine to control the numerical control system movement to the next point of course the moving with it to the next point is going to be within action now, for example, uh, the list of the codes we have to remember is going to be the following. The first code is going to be for the G is going to be the G O O. I think that too small again to enlarge that. So G O O, we have the G zero one, we have the G zero two, the G zero three, the M zero three, and the M thirty. Now one two three four five six that's the only code you have to remember to write down um, what they call a real code a workable code for cutting something now let's um, go and remember what these codes meanings are so goo let's imagine that uh, if i'm going to remove this o uh, is going to be go so that's go zero doing nothing so this will be a linear movement our linear interpolation but with no act there will be no cutting during this operation uh, the G01 is going to be once again a linear interpolation but this will be with cutting usually we use the G00 if the the tool is not having any contact with the work part so we just move from point A to point B uh, without doing any action so no contact between the cutting tool and the work part so no cutting is going to be present in this stage now the G01 now in this case the cutting tool is going to be in direct contact with the work part now the example for that is if this is my work part edge if I'm going to move my cutting tool from here, this point, now I made a circle with the center point because actually the cutting tool point, uh, the cutting tool in the milling at least is going to be a circular cross section with the center point. So actually we're controlling the location of the center point, not the side of the cutting tool. So if I would like to send it from here to here, I'm not going to have any contact between the cutting tool side and the work part. So to move from here to here, I'll write down the G00 and I have to follow it with the coordination of the next point I'm going to. And thus I will have to put the X and the Y. The X value and the Y value for this point, the center point, next center point. Now, if I'm going to move my cutting tool, from this location to that location. Now, during the movement of the center line, I'm going to have a contact between the work part and the cutting tool. Thus, in my movement, I'm going to remove a material. Let, let's imagine that we have a material to that level. I'm going to remove this material and get the new level. So in this case, I'm going to use the G01, G01 and usually is going to be followed once again by the x and the y of this point x and y and usually you follow it with the f which is the feed rate value now the feed rate value is in the example we had for the numerical control is going to be the speed of the table how many millimeter per minute we are going to move let's say it's going to be for example 420 millimeter per minute now just remember that this value is going to be very demanding on the following first the diameter of the cutting tool second the material type 
method, the material of the cutting tool itself. Because we have, if you remember, we, we covered that earlier in the manufacturing, that we have different types of the cutting tool. We have the high-speed steel, we have the carbide insert, and we have the ceramic, for example, and each one is going to have a different velocity for the cutting, including the RPM. And this value, once again, is going to be a reference of the material we cut. For example, we're going to cut the plastic, and it's going to be much easier to move the cutting tool without damaging the cutting tool and thus I can go for the higher feed rate. If I'm going to use the same cutting tool, which is going to be, for example, the high-speed steel, to cut the steel, then I have to slow it down. And the other thing is, it's going to depend of if your cutting is going to be for finished cutting or it's going to be for the rough cutting. Because usually at the far off cutting, we don't require to have a good um, surface roughness. So in this case, I only going to uh, increase the F, and uh, reduce the RPM value. In the case of the finished cutting, I'm going to do the, uh, the opposite thing. I increase the RPM value for the cutting tool and reduce the feed rate to have a better service finishing. So these are the parameters we can control the F value with. Now, we cover the G00 and G01. Let's go for the G02 and G03. Now, if I would like to cut uh, an an arc or a circle or whatever the thing is I would like to move my cutting tool from here and take it to this point so this was my original position and this is my final position and this radius does have an array uh, this is actually does have a radius which is going to call the R1 okay now the R1 is the original radius of the arc I would like to cut but just remember that when we do the programming we don't write the code for this arc, we write the code for the imaginary arc, which is the arc that the center point of your cutting tool is going to move at. So, you know that the cutting tool does have the radius, let's call it the R small. And this is the original radius I would like to have with the cutting. So, the radius of the imaginary arc is going to be the following. This one. Again, to alt R cap, I call it R capital, which is equal to the R1 plus the radius of your cutting tool. Now, just remember once again that when we do programming for the milling, in the case of the profile cut, I cutting a profile, I always make my code where the cutting tool line or the cutting path, that's what we call it, is going to be always offset by the value of the radius of my cutting tool. And the example I gave you is that in the train station, you will find the line, the yellow line, telling you that mind the gap. So actually, that's what you do. You always mind the gap between the cutting tool center and the wall you would like to cut, which is going to be the radius of your cutting tool. That's the radius of your cutting tool between the original line of the cut and the tool path. The same thing we had here. We can see that we have a distance between both, and this is equal to the radius of my cutting tool which is equal to the gap I would like to mine. So now, if I get to move the, the cutting tool from here to here, now I'm moving in a clockwise direction, CW. If I get to move it the other way, from B to A, I get to make it in counterclockwise. And that's what we are going to use for the G02 and the G02 is going to use use for the let's move the paper to the side. Okay, the G02 is going to be used with the clockwise rotation. The G03 is going to be used to make the counterclockwise rotation. Now, once again, if I'm going to move it from A to B, and the G02. Then I'm going to write down G02. I will put the X and the Y parameters for the point B, followed by the R value. The R value is the radius of the imaginary toolpath line. Okay, that's that's easy. And the opposite way, if I'm going to move from the B to A, I'm going to go for the counterclockwise. I'm going to do the X, Y, and the R once again. Now, the other two code I, we have to remember is going to be the M03. The M03, that means start 
you don't have to write down start after that because you actually the machine is not going to read any of the written letter uh, words so that's when you start the spindle and this will be of course the rotational direction is going to be counted clockwise uh, and 30 means stop the program after finishing all the steps program and go back go back to read the code from the beginning let me change the thing the pen okay so go back and uh, read the code from the beginning so it's going to redo the thing we have other codes like the m05 which you want to change the cutting tool and other stuff now uh, in this case I'm not going to give you how to write down the code from the beginning and including the selection of the cutting tool and the other stuff but I'm going to write down the code uh, which is going to be something similar to the um, uh, question you're going to have in your assignment so uh, you remember the part we have in the assignment but I'm going to do something similar to it uh, and uh, during my talk I'm going to give you the, uh, the steps of, also of the solution now just to remind you something the, the second part uh, of the assignment is going to be about the CAD CAM and we have to cut this part uh, on the CNC milling machine uh, downstairs in building 11 level B4 uh, half of the class is going to do this cut, the other half is going to use the turning machine to do the cutting. That's for the uh, UTS students, okay? All UTS students now are required to do the CNC milling machine to make this part. Uh, this uh, code is going to be generated with the uh, CAD CAM uh, package. But in all the cases, now take a look here on how to uh, cut this part. Now, first we're going to make uh, start with the block. So the face is going to be something like that. The first operation we have to do is bring in the cutting tool. Usually in this one, we're not going to have pure profile around the part. So the pro the, we're going to have the face milling and we're going to have the profile cut at the top there. And we're going to have some pocketing and drilling in this surface to end up with this face. Uh, so to make this shape, we are going to first have to clean the outside surface everything around this elliptical shape should be cleaned and that's what we call the face milling in the face milling the cutting tool diameter uh, face uh, let me see if I have something cylindrical mm, cylindrical shape yes I do have okay now in that case uh, my cutting tool if I going to do the face milling just remove the material from the top I'm going to cut with the bottom surface and that's why we use something similar to that which is what we call the flat uh, head cutting tool so it's going to start to remove the material so to remove the material outside the unnecessary material we have to move multiple steps now usually if I going to have the uh, hard material and I would like to have the cuts to get a good surface finishing usually I will go with what we call the cycling or the uh, caning uh, machining process that means I have to remove the material to have the same shape, but this will be to uh, a certain level. For example, the, if the total depth of the cut for this one is going to be 10 millimeters, I will not be able to cut it in one shot. So I have to cut it in two shots. The first one will take it, for example, to five, then another four millimeters, and again to remove one millimeter for the finished cutting. So basically the code is going to be the same but what difference is going to be the uh, height for this one. Now, the other cut we are going to have is going to be the profile cutting. And in the profile cutting, we are going to mine the gap. So always my center of the cutting tool, which is going to be presented by this point, is going to be away from the cutting line, as you can see from the top. Now, away from that, let's have the uh, example we talk about. So um, I'm going to do the profile cutting for that uh, this shape so again to have a uh, circle shape here okay straight and uh, let's get that well let's talk about something similar to that that's very simple shape uh, this will be my datum point for the profile cutting now we usually said that the datum point is going to be at the lower corner to the left side and this represents the top surface of the work part that means if I'm going to take this shape to the three dimensions 
Okay, that's the three dimensions of the part. Oops. Okay, for the three dimensions of the part is going to be at the top surface at the lower bottom corner to the left. Okay, now this point, the datum point, I will reference all my dimensions to this point. If I'm going to sketch the axis, this will be the positive y axis. This will be the positive x axis. And going up from here, this will be the positive z axis. That means everything above the top level surface is going to be positive z. Anything below this surface, top surface is going to be negative. That means if I'm going to do the profile cutting, I have to take my cutting tool level uh sorry the uh, face to the lower level that's mean the z value for the cutting tool which is going to work at this height is going to be negative the height the z is going to be negative the height of my work part now let's go back once again to the example i'm going to reduplicate the same shape okay and make the lines and from the top, I, that's what I see. But now, once again, you have to imagine the things to be worked in three dimensions. Now, usually, when you start any machine, your cutting tool should be away from the work part. Otherwise, you will uh, you, you need to do a setup for the work. If you are going to make a, a setup for the work, while the cutting tool is too close to your hand, you will have a high probability that you will cut your hand even if the machine is not working because we said that the cutting tool usually is going to be a sharp cutting edge and this will be too dangerous if you are going to put your hand under the machine while the cutting tool is too close to it so usually the cutting tool will be away for uh, a certain place that we don't consider what this place is because we're not going to work um, uh, to put this position in the program uh, the machine always going to know that this is your datum point which is going to be identified on the machine and it's, going, it's not included by the way on the on the program you don't have to define it it's going to be defined by the machine itself and the cutting tool usually after finishing the work is going to go to the reference point which is somewhere in the space so the first step we have to do is just to bring the cutting tool from the space let's say it's going to be at this position and we have to take it to the top yeah now this top point is not going to be the zero zero point if you do the profile cutting you will never send your cutting tool center to the reference point because if i'm going to do it with uh, the reference point that's what we're going to end up so you can see that my cutting tool is all already has been um, cutting the the shape of uh, well uh, what they call the is going to be over cutting the part i would like to have is going to cut unnecessary amount of the material. That's mean if I can move from this point to that point, instead of having this cutting line, I'm going to have inside cutting line, and this will make my part smaller. So usually that's why we're going to move it. We are always going to move the cutting tool when the sorry, when the uh, circumference is going to be tangential to the line of the cutting I would like to have. So my movement from A to B is going to generate the line cut I would like to have. So, <clears throat> how to find the points I'm going to do my programming at. The same part, which is going to be different by location, uh, by uh, dimensions from one student to another. Now, once again, uh, you are not allowed to use any CAD program to do the manual G coding. And uh, I don't advise you to use any uh, of the uh, simulators because this will confuse you and you're not going to be able to understand what the G coding is and uh, because you, you will be only worried about how to uh, bring the um, the data or the, the blocks from the simulators and this will cause a big error and actually I can I can indicate that if you got your um, program handwritten of or if you got it from the simulators so not about that but at the end you will end up with the following you're not going to understand the concept of the g coding and the second thing is you're not going to be able to solve the question in the final exam which is going to be carry something about uh 10 to uh, 15 percent of the final exam mark 
in all the cases you have the part you indicate that as what we call the trouble zero point o o o point and to make the occasions where you're going to move the center of your cutting tool around uh, okay now sorry i think this is blurring uh, okay so uh the first thing we're going to do is sketch a line can you see this line uh, Okay, now I sketch a line, hash one, which is going to be parallel to the original line I would like to have to cut at. They're going to be parallel to each other, and it's offset. It. Now, this value of this offset is equal to the radius of your cutting tool. So I'll do the same thing for the, all the other lines. <coughs> and I will be sure that the line I'm sketching they are intersecting. And for the arc, I'm going to make an arc, of course, it's going to be offset. Uh, well, that's uh, just an approximate thing. So I'm going to have the intersection here, here, here. Okay, so I got the intersection points. So I will simply decide that my cutting tool is going to move between these points. If I'm going to move my cutting tool between these points from here, to here to here make an arc cut straight cut straight cut and go back to the center I will end up with the cutted profile I would like to have so to analyze the thing uh, of course to, to find the points if I went here just remember that this was the x axis positive this was the y axis positive and coming to me which is going to be the circle in this case for the arrow uh, point sorry to show that the this is the head of the arrow the toward me is going to be the positive uh, z axis but below there to the uh, lower surface of the work part is going to be the negative x z axis so to write down the code for that now i'm going to bring the cutting tool from anywhere in this space like here for example i would like to reach this point so this point is located at this is the zero point if i get to shift to that side with the value of the radius of my cutting tool that means i will end up with the negative x value let's say that the radius of my cutting tool is four millimeters so this point is going to be minus four for the x and minus four for the y so minus four minus four now for the z value, I, uh, let's say it's going to be uh, that is the total thickness of the work part. Let's say it's going to be 20 millimeters. So if I would like to go to minus 20, to 20, the z value is going to be minus 20 millimeters. So I will put that that is minus 20 for the z. Okay, because I go beneath the level. Now, once again, just remember that we're using the absolute dimensioning. We're not using the uh, um, incremental. So the absolute dimensioning you don't counting from the recent point to the next point you just referencing for the next point what the location to the original point so if I going to move to that point let's say that this distance is equal to 125 so 125 plus 4 so this location maybe is going to be at 129 positive for the x. Now I didn't count from here to here to be 133. No, it's 125 from the origin, then plus 4. So this will be at 129. For the y, it's going to be the same, minus 4. And for the z, it's going to be minus 20. Now, uh, let's say that uh, the height of this line well, uh, actually this arc was not well done okay this is the point so I will say that the height of that point is going to be equal to um, if you cannot see that okay so the height of this point is going to be something about uh, 80 millimeters 
Now, for this point, I don't have to make an offset for the x-axis, uh, for the y-axis, sorry, it's only going to be for the x-axis. So this point location is going to be equal to 129 for the x, and for the y is going to be equal to 80, because the height from here to here is 80, 0 to y. So this will be 80, okay, and the z is going to be minus 20. Now, <clears throat> I'll go back to this one from the other side. Uh, this point is going to be tricky because this point is not going to be exactly at the same level. No, this point is not going to be exactly at the same level for the X. So let's consider the following, that the distance from here to here is going to be another 80. Uh, from here to here, let's get, say it's going to be 60 for the Y and uh, for the x of that let's say is going to be equal to 30. now you have to use the basic uh, uh, triangle method to find what the location for the uh, x of this one the y obviously is going to be the total height okay now the total height if we're going to talk about this one is going to be something about 120 for the height okay 124 this will be for the y of this one 100 20 plus 4 for the gap but this point x is going to be must be uh, found by using the triangle um, calculation so I'm going to sketch a triangle and this triangle I know the location of that point and I know for the x and the y and for this y I know what the value of the y and I have to do the uh, of course I know what the angle of this one regarding to the uh, location from the axis I can find what the length of the third line and simply I can find what the location of the x, y for this point. And that's very important. The same thing is going to be done for this one. It's not going to be straight at the same level. It's going to have a triangle shape. You can simply try this one. So I have to find the location of the triangle uh, by using the triangle to find the value of the x, y of that point. So the points by numbers are going to be the point number one. I will go to the point number two, I will go to the point number three, uh, four, five, six, and go back to the seven. Now, take a look to this shape. Once again, I found all the points by doing the offsetting thing and um, identify the points X and Y. Now, the analysis of the movement. If I get to move to the clockwise or I get to move to the counterclockwise, the only difference I get to have is going to be the uh, code here. It's either going to be G03 if I get to move in the counterclockwise or G02 if I get to move on the clockwise. So, uh, let's move clockwise. So first thing is going to go from point one to point two, and to move from point one, I'm sorry, I have to go from the reference to here, and then do the following. So first thing I have to do is uh, M zero three, and let's say that the uh, this should be followed by the spindle speed. Let's say it's going to be one thousand RPM, and let's say that I'm going to use that the before that I'm going to use that the M uh, zero 05 and I'm going to use the tool number one okay now just the example uh, something like when you're writing a letter you have to put uh, an introduction which is the set of the machine then I have to put the content which is going to be the move over the cutting tool then end up with the conclusion of turn of the engine and go back for, to the beginning so that's step number one step number two choose your tool choose the movement of the uh, uh, spindle and with the value of the RPM. Next step is going to be G00 and I'm going to come from the reference point uh, which uh, anyway I don't have to mention what the what the location of the recent point I just mentioned what the location of the uh, uh, final point for the movement. So G00 to X equal minus 4. The Y is going to be minus 4 and the Z is going to be 10. Now I don't come from the origin point to the point I would like to start to cut with diagonal movement I always move in the horizontal movement so I will go to that point first then I will go for the next point which is going to be that point at level of minus 20 
So G01, the X is going to be minus 4, Y is equal to minus 4. I don't have to rewrite down the location of this one. I'm going to write it down anyway. I don't have to, so I will show you the first time on how to write it. Next one is without writing. Now G01, I, because simply I'm going to send the cutting tool from the higher level to the bottom level. So from Z equal to 10, we are going to move to the Z is equal to minus 20, and I'm going to put the feed rate of, uh, let's say 150 millimeter per minute. So uh, to show you that uh, on the work part like that, for example, I'm going to move from the 10 millimeter heights, I will go to that level. So the face of my cutting tool is going to be horizontal to the lower bottom uh, face of the work part. Okay, so that's what I've done. I just brought the cutting tool from here, sent it to the bottom. You have to go in, you don't have to go further because in this case you will cut the, the table of your CNC machine. Okay, to show you the things in the, I don't know how to show it this way. Anyway, so we're coming from this height, we're going down to the level of the table. So I will start to do the uh, profile cutting. Now just remember in this position, the cutting tool is hardly have a contact with the triple zero points. It's not going to have any uh, internal cut with that. G01. Now the next movement is going to remain at G01. So G01, or I cannot simply don't write it. The next point is going to have the X value of 429, the Y value is minus 4, and the Z is equal to 20. So to write down this line, or this block, I will say that go to the X is equal to 129, and the feed rate is going to be equal to say 300. So I don't have to mention what the X and Z value because there are no changing. I was even able not writing the G01 because it's not going to be changed the same order. So that's what we are going to have in next step. Next step, I'm going to move from this point to that point. Okay, so I'm going to move from this point to that point is going to be G01. So I don't have to write G01. The X is not changing, the Y is changing. So I only get to write down that G01 or write, don't write anything. Just Y equal to 80. Feed rate is not changing. So that's the whole block in this case. Now, I can write that. And then I can simply put the line numbers. Line number is going to be used as a reference. So instead of writing down the line number 1 or the N1, just write N10. The N10 will simply going to give you a space. In case if you would like to add something before that, you can simply start from 1 to 9. So you are going to have a space for 9 blocks to be inserted there. The same thing for the next line, N20. So if I would like to insert something in between this block, I will have the space for 9 uh, blocks. N20, N30, N40, and N50. Then, uh, sorry, we have the N60 as well for this block. Now the N70 is going to be. Now I would like to move from this point to that point. Now let's say that this one, well actually this one should be known because it's going to be ending here. Uh, we're talking about 30 and 80 for the X, that's 110. So the X for this point is going to be 110. And the Y is going to be equal to, we have 120 plus 4, so the Y is going to be 124. So the Y here is 124. Now, um, let's say that the radius 1 of this line is going to be 20 millimeters. So the radius I would like to have with my cutting tool of the 4 millimeter diameter is going to be 24. Now, let's see how we are going to write the code to move and make the circular cutting. The N70 line is going to be G03. G03 because I'm going to move in the counterclockwise. And then this should be followed by the location of the, the next point, which is going to be the X is equal to 110. The Y, I don't, sorry, I don't have to put commas. The Y is going to be equal to 124. And I have to follow by that the R value, I just write down the R, which is going to be equal to 24 millimeters. And then simply we can continue doing the cutting until we are going to finish the whole profile. 
Now, that's for the profile cutting. We said that the location of the cutting tool always going to be in, and the circumference is going to be in contact with the web point. So that's what we're going to have. It's always going to be away. It's not never going to touch the, uh, sorry, uh, we're not going to be exceeding uh, the line of the cutting I would like to have. So just a programming, uh, the the movement of the cutting tool center points among the dashed line intersection points. I'm not going to uh, complete this one because something I'm going to make um, uh, another example, which is going to be for the uh, face milling. Okay, so for the face milling, uh, let me see if I have any example around me uh, away from the uh, the part I just show you. Um, I think this lead will can do the work. Okay, now this is a lead for uh, food container, but we're going to have a circle at the top, cylindrical shape at the top. So I'm going to move my cutting tool to first taking the level of the uh, surface from the top level to the lower level. I will consider that we don't have any edges here, so simply we're going to do the face milling to clean the surface, keeping the tower in the middle where we are going to cut it with the profile milling. So um, let's take a look to the shape. We are going to usually, we always, sorry, not usually, always we are going to start doing any cut on the milling by using a block shape. Sometimes it can be a cylindrical shape. Okay, so we are going to have block shape. Now I'll imagine that I would like to take the cut level to that level. And we're going to have the location of the cylinder there, which is going to be an imaginary coming like that. So I will remove the material from the solid part until I get to have the shape which was dashed with the lines. Okay, now once again, uh, as we remember, that to cut the 10 millimeters, we will never, never do it in single cut. We have to do it with the canning cut, uh, canning or the cycling cutting. Uh, well, once again, to do that, we have to write down the code of removing one layer and then copy and paste the same code. Well, I'm going to change the height of the Z bag. So, once again, this is my datum point. So my datum point is going to be, yes, it's going to be higher than the lower bottom by 30 millimeters, but in all the cases, this is my zero point. Zero for the Z, zero for the X, zero for the Y. That's the positive Z axis, that's the positive Y axis, and this is the positive X axis. Okay, now it's going to be a simple thing is to see the things from the top instead of see it from uh, the side. So, um, if I'm going to, well, I'm going to see from the top is going to be something like that. And I'm going to have this cylindrical shape in the middle. Now, everything we're going to have around here is going to be once again reference to the data point. So this is triple zero point. Uh, for example, this one is going to be at uh, 160 millimeters. And this height is going to be equal to 120 millimeters. And the diameter of my cylindrical shape is, let's say, is going to be 30 millimeters. And I'm going to use the cutting tool to clean the surface. So to clean the surface, my cutting tool should come now to the center because I'm cutting with the uh, face. I'm not cutting with the side now. And I have to move it with a straight lines, uh, something like using the eraser to erase the writing from the paper. So actually what I'm going to do is just to clean everything around this part. So definitely when we're going to do the face milling, we, we're not going to do the profile milling. So the, the same cut is going to be used. So actually that's what I'm going to be cut with the things. I just use a small uh, square shape in the middle was going to have the length of the side is equal to the uh, diameter of my uh, cylindrical shape. 
So uh, just in the imaginary shape, uh, definitely I'm not going to do the face milling with the um, four millimeter di uh, uh, eight millimeter uh, diameter cutting tool, which means the radius is going to be equal to four, because simply this will take forever. So usually the face milling should be done by a larger cutting tool, and mainly we're using something between 30, uh, 20 to 30 millimeters for the higher rate. So, well, sometimes we're going to have big surfaces, either even going to be uh, uh, even bigger. So um, if I'm going to imagine that I'm going to use a 30 millimeter cutting tool, so this will be my first location. So my datum point is going to be the first location for the center or the face of my cutting tool. So once again, I will go from the uh, reference point in the space and come to that point. Uh, when I'm going to insert the cutting tool uh, to the lower level, let's say Z is going to be equal to minus five millimeters. That's mean I did my first cut, which is going to be the removal of the quarter of the circle. Now, why we did that simply because if you are going to do the face milling, you try always to uh, minimize the contact between the cutting tool and the work part because this simply is going to use less energy when you do the cutting. So I just inserted quarter of my cutting tool to this surface. Then I'm going to move my cutting tool to remove the material from the part. So now the dash line is going to be once again from the, for the outside uh, diameter of my work part. So that's mean, uh, sorry, my cutting tool. So I, if that's mean I'm going to move it from here to here. That's uh, everything between the lines is going to be moved anything with, with contact with the work with the cutting tool so in my first movement from here to here I'm going to remove all the material hatched by this line now the next thing is I'm going to make these lines I'm going to be sure that I'm going to cut the uh, well the excess cutting to remove the uh, cynical shape I would like to have is just to remove everything in between here so when I'm going to reach here I'm going to remove my cutting tool where it's going to have the okay so it's going to have the contact with this line not exceeded okay then I'm going to move it to this position okay so now I'm going to remove this material the hash line so one two three I will write down this one two three four I just cleaned half of the part now again to move it to this location to remove everything in between here okay so I'll uh, just finish the dash lines okay uh, well, let's say it's going to be well let's be quite a little bit optimistic now I will say that okay so my next location is going to be uh, here okay so in that way from four to five I'm going to remove this material then from five to six I'm going to remove all this material then from six I'm going to move back to three which is going to go seven in this case Okay, I will remove all this material in the way. So I just cleaned the surface, leaving a square shape in the middle. Okay, then I have to repeat the cycle. So let's write down the code for this one first, and I will uh, remove five millimeters in the uh, first uh, stage. Now, you can see that I'm not going to cut the cylindrical shape at the beginning. I will leave it until I get to change the tool. Or, yeah, I'll leave it till I get to change the tool. I'm not going to cut it with this one yet because actually uh, cut it with the smaller tool is going to be much easier to program. So let's try down the code for this one. So uh, you can see that all, every, all the movement is going to be in the uh, G01 because we're not going to do any uh, circular interpolation. So once again, I'm going to write down that the line number 10 is going to be tool number two. Let's say that this one tool number two, which is going to have the 20 millimeter, uh, was that 50 millimeter diameter, for example. Tw 20, now let's say that this is zero, we said that this one is uh, uh, this point 
at the end there so it's going to be equal to 115 yeah 160 and uh, 0 for the X for the Y and this one is 120 and 0 for the X ah, sorry, 0 and 120 now for the Z I'm going to control that myself so uh, choose the tool number 20 I don't have to mention what the diameter is something like when you write down uh, a MATLAB code so you don't have to give anything which can be uh, wrongfully written uh, read by the uh, machine so uh, N number uh, 20 is going to be M03 with the spindle this is going to be 1000 once again uh, for the RPM and uh, 30 is going to be G00 where the X is equal to 0 Y is equal to 0 and the Z is equal to 10 millimeters. So I just brought the cutting tool uh, to the top of this location, but with the height of 10 millimeters above the top surface. The second movement for the cutting tool and 40 is going to be G01. You know, because we are going to have the drilling operation inside the work one. Uh, G01. Uh, the X and the Y are not changing, but the Z is changing. Go to the Z is equal to minus 5. So I'm going to penetrate my cutting tool uh, uh, face to 5 millimeters below the top surface. So I put it as minus 5. The M50 is going to be G01. I'm not going to write down that once again for the simplicity. I only going to write down that the X is not going to change. Go to the Y is equal to 120. Now you can see I'm not going to add the Z. Oh, I forgot something here. The feed rate, uh, 450, and the feed rate here, let's say, is going to be 200. Okay, uh, I just forgot the feed rate. This should be added. Uh, and uh, 60. Now, uh, now for the N60, I have to move it to the side. This will depend on the following. It's not going to depend only on the diameter of your cutting tool. It's going to depending on the location of this line. Now, for example, if I'm going to have, uh, we said that the diameter of the cutting tool was uh, 30. So this line is going to be at 15 for the X direction. And let's say that this one is going to be at location of uh, uh, 15. Uh, well, let's say it's going to be 40. I'm not sure about that, but let's say it's going to be 40. So we go back once again by 10. So the center point of this line is going to be equal to that's 40. And we go back by minus 15. So it's going to be at 35. So the Y is going to remain as 120, but the X is going to be at 35. So this line is going to be G0, not going to be changed. The Y is not going to be changed, but the X is going to be equal to 35. I don't have to add anything after this line, just this block is going to be read, read by the machine as, okay, now go to the center point with no changing in the y direction, no, cha uh, no changing in the z level, you're only going to change the x axis point, uh, the uh, dimension to be 35. So I just keep doing all these lines until I get to finish the cleaning of the whole face, and that's what we call the face milling. Now, next step, I would like to go for further five millimeters. So what I'm going to do is just copy this line from um, from here. Okay, copy this the whole blocks, whole whole uh, sorry operation to clean the whole surface. Uh, or actually, it's going to be moved from one to seven. Just copy and put it back once again. And the only thing we're going to change with it is going to be the value for the Z to be minus ten instead of. Um, minus five so I hope that's um, a good hint on how to do the assignment in question in the two dimensions we explained earlier here for the profile cutting and in the three dimensions like what we've done here for the face milling. okay now the only hint I get to give you now is about how to cut a cylindrical shape with the milling uh, uh, programming now, usually for the, um, we know that for the uh, circle interpolation or the uh, um, arc interpolation, we're using the G02 and the G03. We said this one is going to be for the clockwise and this will be for the counterclockwise. Uh, usually we said that this code is going to be followed by the R and the R is only going to give you the, uh, the arc of the uh, 
the, 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 the uh, radius again to uh, make with the cutting. In the old days, the code was written like that, G02 going to X is equal to three, uh, 30 millimeters, Y is equal to 40 millimeters, and then followed by the I value and the J value. The R value and the J value is actually locating where the center of the arc I would like to make with the G02. Okay. This is quite complicated to find where the location of the um, center of the arc you would like to cut. So they simply just um, uh, found the R code, which tell okay, just tell what the radius. So the machine will simply get to compute what the what the center location. That's made the life much much easier. But the, now we have problem with the uh, R instead of the I and J. If I go to cut a full cylindrical shape. If uh, once again it's going to be um, that's the part I would like to have. If I'm going to cut from the outside, uh, this will be the profile cutting. If I would like to cut something from the inside, okay, now this will be called the uh, pocketing. Okay, uh, so this will be the solid part, and uh, that's what I'm going to cut. So I would like to go for a trip with the cutting tool in a circular shape. It's going to be offset by the value of the radius of your cutting tool. Now the problem we have with that is if I go to cut using the I and the J, I can simply take my cutting tool in a full trip for 360 degree to make the cut of the cylindrical shape. For the R code, it can go for 359 degrees only. That means it's going to have a small niche there. It's not going to be cut it. So this is the uh, problem we always face with the R code. So how to solve this problem? If I can, cannot cut it for 360 degree, I can only cut it for 359 accurately. Uh, that's very simple. That's what I'm done. I just made a line here. So I'm going to move my cutting tool from this position to that position first. That's 180 degree. It's going to cut it fine, nice, easy, clean, right? No problem. So just simply, when I get to reach that point, I'm going to make another line code to bring it back to here. Another 180 degree. Boom, I cut 360 degree. And that's what the requirements are. So. Uh, this will be an easy example on how to write down the code. Just remember is that if this radius is going to be equal to 20 millimeter, my cutting tool it has a radius of 4 millimeters, so the R again to add is going to be equal to 24. Now, let's say that this point is going to be uh, the X is equal to 200 and the Y is equal to 240. Okay, and for that point, the X is equal, of course, 200. And the Y is equal to 120. Now, ju just a minute. No, actually, let's be more accurate this time. So, I'm going to uh, minus 4. Uh, let's make it 196. I go for minus um, 40. Oh, well, it's just assembly. Let's go minus 48. So, uh, this will make it as 152 for the Y. 152 okay so um, I got the location of both so to write down a full circle uh, with a profile cutting simply again to write down the simple two codes uh, well no that, let, let's write down everything from the beginning so I will come from somewhere to stop here so write down the first code is G00 where the X is equal to 200 Y is equal to 240 Okay, and the Z is equal to 5 millimeters height from the point. Okay, then the G01, uh, the Z is going to be equal to minus 5. Okay, with the feed rate of 120. And then I will go with the G02. Okay, I will go in this direction. G02, go where the X is equal to 200. Y is equal to 152 and the radius is of 24 millimeters.
okay you may change the feed rate by the way if you'd like to make it higher or lower it's up to you then now I've cut a half of the cylindrical shape I would like to cut the other half so once again G02 the X is going to be equal to 200 and the Y is equal to 240 with the R of 24 okay then G00 go to the Z is equal to 5 okay so I just made the cut by uh, parts uh, the final trick we would like to learn today is going to be for the pocketing and that's if I'm going to cut now the other example the, the same example for the lead I'm going to use my cutting tool to cut a pocket from inside so it's internal profiling internal profiling so for the internal profiling I will give you an easy example and this will help you on how to choose the cutting tool I would like to cut uh, a pocket like that now just remember once again that in the case of the milling operation it's impossible whatever you've done to have a straight edge for the internal cut you're not going to have the upright angle you're always going to have a fillet now why you're always going to have it like that if I get to do the internal cutting it's going to be very easy for example to cut from the outside to have um, an, a, an angle like that because actually my lines can go straight cut uh, my cutting tool is always going to move um, in straight lines in all the locations so I'm going to end up with sharp angle here but in the case of the internal cutting it's impossible because my cutting tool is always in rotation from the inside it's have uh, the uh, surface is going to be circular so we're always going to end up with the fillets so if your fillets going to have the radius of up to uh, seven millimeters okay 7.5 millimeters sorry so simply you can use the cutting tool of 15 millimeters diameter and this will simply going to help you to prevent the linear interpolation when you do the cutting of the edges it's going to be simply just go in straight lines and do the cut and the radius of your cutting tool will be able to do the fillet cut so if I would like to cut the pocketing here now once again this will be the solid material is going to be a hash lines and I would like to cut and clean the pocket inside the work part so I'm going to bring my cutting tool uh, to this position from anywhere in this space now of course this location is going to be a reference to the datum point that on point so I'm going to bring the cutting tool here to the top then I'm going to penetrate it inside by doing the drilling operation which is just lowering the z-level with the feed rate and then I'm going to move it to this location I'm going to move it to uh, well I have to clean the area in the middle so in this movement I'm going to clean everything we are going to have here I have to clean this area so I'm going to move it to this location okay and then take it down I'm going to clean everything in this area then move it to the side and go up and I'm going to clean everything here so this point is going to be one two three four five and six so six points is going to clean the pocket and I'm going to have the pocket inside sometimes we're going to use a small cutting tool to do the pocketing you have to do the linear interpolation at the corners and this is something going to increase the steps or the movement now usually in the pocketing as we mentioned earlier is going to be something like the face milling and the um, internal uh, um, uh, profile cutting so you have to uh, manage between the removal of uh, high rate of the material and at the same time you have to worry about how to provide the exact dimensions for the uh, shape you are going to have okay so i think that's um uh, that's enough for today's uh, tutorial if you have any question you can ask me during the class thank you very much